Hey guys, my name's Bill, Yo-Yo Tech. Today we're gonna take a look at a quick install of Home Assistant. Get you up and running on a Raspberry 3. Let's go ahead and roll the intro. So guys, welcome back. Um, just as a reminder, we still have a contest going on if you're interested in the Amazon Fire tablet. Link is below, go ahead and enter that contest. At the end of this week, we'll close that down. Also, we opened up a Patreon site last week. Uh, if you're interested in checking that out, link is down below as well. Subscribe as always, click the bell if you're interested. Let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're going to go to homeassistant.io and we're gonna download the image for the Raspberry Pi 3. And it's only gonna take a minute. The next step we're gonna to wanna to do is take a look at the uh, downloader or download the program Etcher. Etcher is basically just an image burning uh, program. This has come a long way in the last little while. Uh, I'm going to select the one. I'm on Mac OS here, so I'll uh, download mine and go ahead and install that on my computer. Uh, like I said, this has come a long way. I mean, installing a, an image like this on an SD card is super simple now. So go ahead and install that and open it up. And you're going to want to make sure, of course, that the Raspberry Pi uh, SD card is inserted into your computer at this time. And we're going to go ahead and select the image that we downloaded a minute ago, the resin OS from Home Assistant. And we're going to want to make sure we have the right SD card reader or the right card selected. Look at the size, that's always a good indicator, but uh, when you're sure of that, go ahead and continue. And we're going to go ahead and click Flash. Now, if this is the first time, it may ask you for your uh, admin password and just click flash again and off it goes now this is going to take a few minutes uh, i sped it up obviously here um, but it ran through the entire process and just about as much time finishing and then it runs through a verify process and when that is all done uh, it will automatically go ahead and eject the sd card from your computer at least if it's on a mac it'll unmount it So uh, next thing we're going to want to do, I'm running on Wi-Fi, not on Ethernet. So I'm going to go ahead here and look at the instructions for how I can get the uh, Wi-Fi uh, SSID and password in there before we take it out and put it in the Raspberry Pi. So you're going to want to go ahead and uh, remount the, the SD card. So if on the Mac, I had to pull it out and push it back in again. And we're going to go ahead and go into the file system on the SD card. And we'll just scroll down here until we see system connections and we'll open up resin sample. Um, I'm using uh, brackets for this, but you can use any text editor that you want on your system. And then uh, this part is pretty simple to do. We're just going to want to go in and update the SSID uh, connection string. And you're going to go on or go ahead and change your super secret Wi-Fi password to your actual super secret Wi-Fi password. And we'll go ahead and save that file. Close that all down. And you can go ahead at this point and eject that from your system and put it in the Raspberry Pi Start It Up. And we'll click on the link here in the instructions, hasio.local8123. And what this will do is take us to a page that is just waiting for the installation and the update to install on the Raspberry Pi. Now this can take up to about 20 minutes. So again, I, I sped this up so we didn't have to sit and watch it, but uh, don't be worried, it will take some time. And when it's done, it will jump into the main configuration page where you can see it's already gone and found a bunch of devices on my system. Uh, most of those are my Sonos and my Plex media servers and a few Chromecast. And a quick look around here, we can see uh, the settings. And finally, we'll jump over to the add-ons and I'm just gonna add a few things. Now this has been changed recently. It's, it's pretty much automatic. So I'm gonna go ahead and install Samba. This will allow us to uh, get into the file systems and work on the configuration files in a future video. And this is happening in the background, just takes a few minutes to go. And there we go. And we will go ahead and 
start the service here. Um, I didn't change anything on mine. I just used the default uh, settings here in the beginning. Uh, but you can go ahead and, and change those for your, your Samba settings if you'd like. I started up the service. I went ahead here and I actually installed a couple other services just to get them going in the back end. Uh, Google Voice we installed. And just going through the default list here, I also put the SSH server on. And I think that was it for now. Now these are the default um, add-ons. These are part of the repository, kind of the built-in one. There are many, many others that you can go and do. Open up the file explorer on your computer or finder. Samba did start up and I can go ahead and browse my file system. So guys, that's pretty much it. The installation itself went super easy. Um, I think that my biggest criticism, if there is any at all at this point, is the documentation within uh, Home Assistant. It is good, but there are, there are some definite holes in it if you're a first time uh, installer. So definitely take a look at this video, walk through there. Uh, you should be able to get everything up and running. Coming weeks, I've got a video I'm working on where we're going to get uh, Z-Wave up and running. We're going to take a look at some of the other add-ons in Home Assistant. Um, so if you want to go ahead and get your Raspberry Pi up and running, if you're looking for a Raspberry Pi or anything like that, I have the links down below of everything that I use to get up and running, including the Z-Wave uh, receiver that I have connected to my Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and take a look at those. Get yourself on up to speed. Try that out. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and we will see you in the next video.